Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife, Melissa, and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hey guys, and good morning to you all. Today I am headed off, um, actually to my shop, <laughs> not on a pick because I was just on a pick. I was on an adventure and I bought some neat things and I've got to go unload at the store. Now, sometimes when I go and buy this stuff, people are okay with me um, filming and putting it on camera. In this case, um, didn't really want to invade the lady's privacy, but we did find some interesting items. Been there a couple times and got some cool stuff before. With any luck, I'll have a chance to go back again, but we're gonna get to the store. I'll show you the sorts of things that I bought, and uh, hopefully you'll think that's interesting too. So follow along on today's episode as we unpack some estate treasures again today. Hey, I'm here at the shop. The car is pretty full. I wasn't expecting to really buy a whole lot uh, today, but I ended up with a car full of stuff. That's usually what happens. Um, but I did get a few cool things and a nice little bit of variety stuff that I haven't really picked up in the last little bit. Not the world's uh, biggest haul of stuff, but let me start uh, hauling these boxes in and show you what came through. And of course the store is open today. It looks kind of quiet right now. I see Patrick, you guys remember Patrick is uh, manning the shop today. I'm just bringing some stuff in. Uh, I think you need a haircut, Pat. I don't know, I, I think that you couldn't go any shorter if you tried. You could, uh, and there wouldn't be much left. You have the Mr. Clean look going. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start bringing stuff in. First thing to bring inside is some old stereo gear. Uh, there's a turntable, uh, there's an amplifier, there's a um, cassette deck, We're gonna and some speakers. So we're gonna get these pulled inside and have a look-see. A random box of assorted bicycle parts, because you never know when you're gonna need bicycle parts, so there's a headlight in there. Who knows what's in here? Amp meters, all sorts of odd, odd random stuff of which I might need very little, but you know, the price was right. I think I paid five bucks for this whole box and sometimes you need a pedal or soldering flux or, oh, these are handy. These are showcase shelf brackets. I could use those. So there's some good stuff in there. I'll probably get my five bucks worth out of that box. So the first thing that I brought in was the stereo gear. Now we have, Pretty much a whole unit. We've got an amplifier, we've got a turntable, we've got some speakers. But what's interesting to note when it comes to turntables is that some are worth a lot of money and some are not. Now this is a dual. It's in fact it's a Noresco dual. It would have been sort of an audiophile set back in the 1970s. I think this is probably late 60s or early 70s. Um, it has an idler arm on it. It's so a little bit higher quality than what you would have normally seen. I have not tested any of this stuff out to see if it works yet, but you can repair it. The amplifier is really unique. Um, it's a Heath kit and as are the speakers. Heath kit was an American company. They're still in business now, but they make more, more sort of uh, gauges and things like that. Um, but they were uh, an audiophile high-end uh, amplifier. If you liked your music, a Heath kit was a high-end brand to get. Now, um, this amp in perfect mint working condition, probably like a $400 thing, uh, in an unknown shape like this, uh, it's not worth a whole lot until I get it uh, verified that it's working and get it fixed. But still a good find, and it's the type um, of style that people are looking for. It's got that mid-century modern kind of look, and uh, really look fantastic in your house. There was even an old Orex cassette deck. Now, you might be saying to yourself, Alex, why have you bought a cassette deck? Who listens to cassettes anymore? This might surprise some of you, but there are bands out there that are putting out their modern music, their current albums, on cassette. It's become trendy, it's a retro, it's a throwback. So what do you play it on? Something like that. I picked up a bunch of books today too. Now, some of them I got because people will decorate. Patrick, that's a good one. Remember we saw one of these in the Potter's yeah. house that we found. But this one is the Lippincott's Pronouncing Gazetteer. And I don't even know if I said that right, so I apparently need to read this book. Uh, new edition, thoroughly revised and enlarged. So maybe somebody had some real issues with the last edition, but, um, Kind of an odd piece, leather bound, and we can see what year it was, 1880. So nice, early and interesting book. Um, yeah, so if you really want to know how to pronounce words that we probably don't even use anymore in our modern vernacular, you can look it up in there. Some of these I picked up because they were just darn cool. Books on spiders from the 1800s, the spiders of Dorset. 
uh, leather bound the spider book by john henry comstock now you know that sounds like good reading but some of the plates in here can be pretty interesting and uh early pictures the nice ones are the uh spider books that you get that have uh not just photos but the, the actually the hand painted plates and i don't know if this one has a minute or not some of them did some of them didn't but you know this book has been sold many times last time it was sold was 1966 this book dates from 1879 and i'm assuming that's probably a first edition of that and if you're into spiders it's pretty cool uh so there's a few books on insects and bugs you know it all comes to subject matter when you're buying old books like this so here's one neat one a short history of english people not a a history of short english people that might be a smaller book uh let's see english surnames this might even be interesting i almost wonder if my last name is in here i'm gonna look it up let's see i see archbishop archdeacon archer Archpriest, Argent, hmm. I don't see myself in here, but I know we're English. Maybe we're the ish part of the English. Are you English? Eh, ish. English-ish. Interesting read though, either way. Keep that one aside. Some of these books I feel like they, they look like they belong in Hogwarts. This is the Dictionary of Phrase and Fable. That's just such a great sounding name. You know, um, sometimes people buy these books because of what's inside of them. Other times, you know, they buy it just because of that. It looks really cool. Um, one of them just made me laugh. And that was this one right here. It's the international who's who of intellectuals. Why, if you're not in this book, you're nobody. <laughs> it makes me laugh every time. I mean, they had their own book. But um, ever, all their information is listed in here. I'm sure all these people did absolutely wonderfully interesting things to end up in this book. But how smart were you to put your name and address and postal code or zip code in here um, for everyone to be able to contact? I don't know if you had to be on a special list to get this or you could just go in and buy it. But if you were a person who really didn't like those brainy folks in school, well, you could have gotten the international who's who and sent them some nasty fan letters. Either way, it's pretty cool to see. Sadly, I'm not in here. I wasn't even probably born when this book came out but uh you might have family members that are in the who's who you never know as a bonus in the box of books i actually found the instruction manual for the uh heath kit that's quite the book could you imagine you buy a you don't even get a manual with your phone nowadays and a phone does a million more things than your uh heath kit uh, stereo would have but they gave you a full manual on these things back in the day um you think that would scare most people off nowadays. They said, oh yeah, you can listen to your music, but first you have to read these 500 pages and learn how to wire uh, a circuit board, and then you'll have your music. I'm not so sure anybody would take it. It looks like, yeah, 1971, so early 70s. My guess at late 60s, early 70s. There's the one for the uh, dual. Auto professional turntable. So that was not a not your standard dual model, which is good. There's even the one for the speakers too. So it's always nice to get instructions. Um, we're unpacking some stuff here and there is an Encyclopedia Britannica index, but this is just the index. It's got the words, but not the explanations. Oh no. You dropped stuff. Okay. My glass didn't break. Actually, my glass broke the other day. Unrelated. Wah, wah. So I don't want to break it again because I'm klutzy sometimes. These are neat though. Um, if you don't know what these are, these are for the back of a wristwatch. Of course, you access the interior of a watch, everybody knows, through the back. Now, some of them pop off, some of them are threaded. This is for, specifically, a Rolex. As you can see, Rolex has a patented sort of spline, all those little grooves there. You need the proper tool, and I'll show you on an old, this is a um, 1950s Tudor, made by Rolex. But if you look at the back, see how it's splined? If you want to get one of these watches off without doing any damage, you have to have a Rolex watch opener. Now, this is three different sizes. That one's double-sided, and then this, this one's single. But um, I'm constantly working on old watches or getting them fixed up or repaired, so it is really helpful for me to have these tools around, and I'm going to put them to get good use in the shop here. So for me, some tools that might come in handy when we're tinkering on some old watches. I've said it before and I'll say it again, dictionaries were just bigger back in the old days. Um, well, the Bible dictionary is actually kind of small, that's the teacher's edition. So this is probably, I'm going to say early 1900s. It was given or purchased in 1940 for seven bucks, it looks like. But this edition, sometimes they're Roman numerals and you have to kind of decipher the, uh, the date, 1884. 
So this book was old when it was purchased in 1940. Um, so it's got all the different uh, sorts of words that show up in the Bible. And um, nice little dictionary that from the 1800s. Pretty, pretty interesting piece. A nice original cover on it too, in very good condition. Um, but we look at just a regular dictionary, um, it kind of dwarfs it. Now, this this dictionary is oh, well over a foot tall. It's thousands of pages. It always makes me think there's got to be some words missing out of here that we just don't use any anymore. Because uh, you go to the store and look at a modern dictionary, it's like, you know, uh, it's like a quarter the size or a third the size of this. So you know we're missing something nowadays. Old books can have some really fantastic information in them that we just don't find. A lot of people have this misnomer that everything is available online, but I can tell you with certainty that most everything is not. Um, so when we get some interesting old books, uh, especially ones that have some great character to them, we love to bring them to the shop. Now, I picked up uh, a few encyclopedias and dictionaries, and those ones I didn't necessarily pick up for the information that's in them. I picked them up because people decorate with them. As much as books are something that are completely useful, people do decorate their houses and homes and, and bookcases. And a nice leather-bound edition of a 100-year-old encyclopedia set. Um, whether a person feels that they're going to read through it or not, that's their choice. But in the meantime, they have something that's beautiful to look at. Now, other things that we got in today, like this, is a complete guide to hand-loading, is a 1930s edition of a uh, hand-loading book on weaponry. Now, if you are a collector of these sorts of guns uh, and you don't know how to load them or need to know all the information about them, a book like this can be uh, very, very useful and they're increasingly hard to find. So we picked that up. Uh, also another atlas here. Now, <clears throat> on occasion, people will actually take the, uh, the plates out of the atlases, so you'll find these books. And the plates, like this, have been removed because people will frame them or sell them separately. So an atlas like this can be actually worth more money if it's parted out. However, that would be an absolute shame. And of course, uh, you can tell uh, the age of something, uh, not just by looking in the uh, first few pages to get the date off of it, but you can tell the age by what the countries and borders were. You can go to the US or Canada and see what what's there and what's not. Um, this one first came out in 1897, and this is the 1914 edition. So I can tell you that um, Canada is definitely going to look pretty different than what it does right now. Really, really neat. We do also pick up instruments from time to time as well. Now, those are one antique or one product category that it doesn't matter how old it gets. There's going to be somebody out there who's going to want to play it or try it. Uh, of course, when it comes to violins, everybody knows Stradivarius. That's a pretty old violin, but worth a lot of money. When it comes to guitars, the older the better, um, and condition is everything, and that goes the same for saxophones. The right one can be a collector's item, and let me show you this one. This is a con saxophone. Now, they were a higher-end brand of saxophone. At some point, the uh, the felts and pads have been redone. Um, that is, can be kind of expensive to do, so you want to make sure you check on the condition of the instrument. This model is of particular interest because it's considered the Chew Berry model, and Leon uh, Brown Berry, named Chew Berry, um, because he used to chew on the mouthpiece to, to get the uh, mouthpiece um, kind of the, the spit right <laughs> before he'd play the sax, so they nicknamed him Chew. Um, this saxophone is much loved by jazz musicians and blues artists, so it is a little bit more collectible than most others. Um, we're going to have to go through and check on condition, but it's nice. It has the original case, and there's even some new reeds in the package. Oh, this might be a player's instrument without much effort. Few extra treasures today, always nice to go out and get some stuff. And I was thinking I should be emptying the store, not filling it back up again. But if you fill it up with cool stuff, that's okay too. So we'll say bye to Patrick as we head out. And there he is working the desk over there. I'm gonna uh, head off and on the road. It's my day off technically today and go work on the BMW I set in the garage. You guys have a wonderful evening and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.